Over the past month, we've seen some serious cyber attacks penetrating the defenses of various critical infrastructure sectors, causing significant disruptions. Join us as we explore the most impactful stories in our latest updates for July 2023. This is SIP Cyber Monthly Roundup, brought to you by OpsWAT, a global leader in IT and OT cybersecurity. Let's kick off our roundup with a shocking revelation. Initial access brokers are stepping up their game on the dark web, with a clear increase in posts targeting banks. These cyber brokers sell access to compromised systems, setting the stage for bigger attacks. The banking sector, a high-value target, is witnessing a surge in these activities. At the same time, Deutsche Bank AG, along with other German banks, has been impacted by a move-it data breach. The breach, carried out by the infamous Klopp ransomware gang, has affected over 300 companies worldwide. The leaked data includes customers' names and international banking account numbers. While this breach doesn't grant direct access to customers' accounts, it does enable unauthorized direct debits. In response, Deutsche Bank has extended the unauthorized direct debit returns window to 13 months, providing customers with additional time to identify and report fraudulent transactions. In the face of these threats, the banking sector is taking action. Deutsche Bank's response to the MoveIt breach is one such example of the measures being taken to protect customer data. Next in our roundup, we focus on a recent attack on Japan's largest port, the port of Nagoya. On July 4, 2023, a ransomware attack disrupted the port's central computer system, leading to widespread disruptions and congestion. Some terminals switched to manual systems to ease the impact. The attack was claimed by the pro-Russian cyber gang Lockbit 3.0, who demanded a ransom to restore the systems. The Nagoya Harbor Transportation Authority, however, did not pay the ransom. The attack significantly affected manufacturers like Toyota Motor Corporation, which uses the port extensively for its export and import operations. Toyota was unable to load or offload auto parts due to the system disruption. Despite this, Toyota's production and delivery of finished vehicles remained unaffected, thanks to the use of a separate computer system. Next, we're moving on to a zero-day exploitation. CISA has reported an exploitation of a Citrix zero-day vulnerability, CVE-20233519, against a critical infrastructure organization recently. Threat actors used the vulnerability to drop a web shell on an ADC appliance in the victim's non-production environment, enabling them to explore the victim's active directory, add, and exfiltrate AD data. Attempts to move laterally to a domain controller were blocked by network segmentation controls. The vulnerability affects Netscaler ADC and Netscaler Gateway products and allows for inauthenticated remote code execution on appliances configured as a gateway or AAA virtual server. CISA has shared tactics, techniques, and procedures TTPs, from the incident to aid others in detecting potential attacks. The exploitation of CVE-20233519 is likely to rise, with over 11,000 unique IPs linked to internet-exposed Citrix ADC and Gateway instances, primarily in the United States and Europe. Moving on to the energy sector, a vulnerability in Context SolarView, a solar power monitoring product used at over 30,000 power stations, is being actively exploited. The flaw, CVE-20222903, allows for remote code injection by unauthenticated attackers. According to Volmcheck, this security hole was only patched in version 8.0, leaving versions as far back as 4.0 vulnerable. Of the 600 internet-exposed solar view systems, over 400 are running these vulnerable versions. Exploitation could lead to a loss of view, and if the solar view hardware is part of a solar power generation site, attackers could disrupt productivity and revenue by using the hardware to attack other ICS resources. Volmcheck also warned of other exploitable solar view vulnerabilities, including CVE-20232333 and CVE-20244354. Finally, we turn to critical vulnerabilities in Honeywell and Rockwell automation products. These industrial tools could potentially be remotely taken over by hackers, leading to destructive attacks. Federal authorities notified Rockwell about a novel exploit capability linked to advanced persistent threat actors using vulnerabilities in the company's Controllogix Ethernet IP communication modules. One vulnerability, CVE-20233595, could allow an attacker to remotely take over a system and modify, block or steal data, 
A related vulnerability, CVE-2023-3596, could allow a denial of service condition. Meanwhile, critical vulnerabilities have been identified in Honeywell Asperion DCS platforms. These vulnerabilities could allow an attacker to take remote control and leverage any compromised IT, IoT or OT assets, resulting in stalled production, sabotage of a facility or use in some type of attack. Both Rockwell and Honeywell have been working closely with government officials to respond to the vulnerabilities and have issued fixes. Wrapping up this month's roundup, we've seen a range of cybersecurity incidents across sectors. These underline the importance of robust cybersecurity measures and constant vigilance. Thank you for joining us for this month's roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and we'll see you next month with more updates from the world of OT-ICS cybersecurity.